So welcome on this call, Ms. Atullah Stream. So without wasting much more time, uh, I would like to request you to take up with the further session. Over to you. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, Shreyas Ji, for the warm welcome. So myself, Atulya Shri, I hope all of you are enjoying the sessions. So before starting the session, let's uh, seek our blessings from our gurus and mentors. So everyone, please sit comfortably and Sorry, uh, did you say something to me? I'm not able to hear you. Kindly mute yourself. She has to start the session. Thank you. Okay, let's start the session with a prayer. Everyone sit comfortably and easily. Your spine erect, eyes closed. Take a deep breath in. And out. Once again, a deep breath in. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Akshat Param Brahma, Barme, Tasme Sri Gurve Namaha. Before opening your eyes, you may rub your hands together and place it on your eyes. You may gently open your eyes. Once again, Namaste. So let's start our session. I'll share my screen. Are you able to see? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Let me put it in slideshow mode. One sec. Okay. So the World Yoga Asana Coaches Foundation program, and our topic for today is key judging points of hand balancing asanas. I hope all of you are familiar with the COP. I think you already had few sessions on uh, back bending, twisting yoga asanas, and I think yesterday you had leg balancing as well, right? And That's I hope right. all, yeah, I hope you are familiar with the COP because this is the most important document we will need for all the yoga asana competitions and events. So please make sure you have a hard copy or soft copy with you, okay? Today I'll be sharing uh, the important parts, but for you to take notes and uh, it will be beneficial. Okay, so this is the COP and uh, we'll be uh, looking at all these 50 asanas. Okay, there are 25 under hand balance backward bend, Sorry, forward bend and also hand balance backward bend. Okay. Now, I want you to think, is this a key judging point written from whose point of view? Is it from the point of view of a judge or the coach? 
what do you think it is written for the judge but as a coach we can make use of it right so to make sure that our athletes get maximum marks it is very crucial for you to go through the key judging points very thoroughly and uh, understand it very much for make for making sure that your athletes gets the maximum marks but the key judge judging points are written from the point of view of the judge okay so i want you to think like a judge for the next few minutes okay so over to the next slide so we are starting a session on hand balancing forward bend are you familiar that there are five categories group i mean the groups group a b c d and e so the group a has the base value of 0.6 okay and um for your ease of understanding i tried highlighting the areas so you may note down these points more importantly okay the first one being one sec let me fix my screen i'll just uh, stop my video for one sec I'm back. So the first asana, that is the hand balancing um, forward bend, Brahmacharya asana. Okay. So let's look at the key judging points. What is written there? Both knees should be straight, and the legs should be joined together. Palms should be placed on the floor because we are doing a hand balancing asana. So the palms will be obviously on the floor. and hands should be kept in chest width spine should be straight and upright there will be a slight forward bending here but still it is written that it should be straight and upright face facing forward both legs parallel to the floor and equally raised fingers closed okay is it okay for you then we will move on to kukkutasana the athlete must be in hand and balance shoulder distance in hands parallel to each other padmasana par the floor this here the padmasana he is holding it parallel to the floor expansion of chest back stretched toes must be out of the armpit this is a very important point the toes must be out of the armpit face facing forward fingers are closed and flat on ground you will realize that in most asanas the palms will be where it will be placed on the floor and it will the fingers will be closed flat on the ground it won't be like this or it won't be spread like this it should be closed fingers will be closed and flat on the ground okay that's why i haven't highlighted this repeating points okay the next one bakasana that is hbf a3 bakasana athlete should be on hand balance do you need to say that it's hand balancing so athlete should be on hand balance some distance in hands and shoulder width knees under armpits elbows straight toes close together and pointed this is also a very common point in most asana toes will be closed and pointed this is also one of the point you have to underline knees under armpits okay otherwise it will be an another asana also the elbow should be straight that's the important point to consider while performing bakasana now dvipada kaundinya asana both legs should be stretched sideways please look at it here also the toes are pointed the feet and toes must be joined together legs should be straight and above elbow both hands firmly placed on ground with shoulder distance expansion of chest face facing forward fingers closed so these points are again common points the expansion of chest is almost there in all asanas face facing forward fingers closed 
both hands firmly placed on ground now the last asana on uh, the group a okay pallu kasana athlet must be in half hand balance what is meant by half hand balance the forearms are also touching the floor right so there are few asanas where athletes are required to perform in half hand balance okay this is one among the few okay and the shoulder distance in elbows are parallel to each other the distance between the elbows should be same okay it should be parallel to each other hands inserted and coming out at calf part of padmasana so you may look at it that you can see that the hands are coming out of the legs right inside the legs right it is inserted and coming out at the calf part face facing forward fingers closed okay so we are done with the first group i know there are uh, at least 10 pages so we will go with this page and you will figure out that it's very easy if you highlight the important points because all other points are same okay shall we move on to the next slide okay next one it is the group b1 which has a base value of 0.7 urdhva kukudasana here i am just reading the highlighted points okay athlete should do padmasana with both shin bone under armpits the shin bone means the part after your knee okay below your knee so, so the athlete should do padmasana with both shin bone under armpits knees and glute muscle parallel to floor glute muscles means your um hip areas and your knees should be parallel to the floor this area should be parallel to the floor stomach in contact with thighs the stomach is touching the thighs <coughs> are you able to see now while i move my mouse yes ma'am okay one sec then what's next face facing forward elbows straight elbows should be straight now mayurasana this is one interesting asana in which if you look closely look at the area of hand how is it placed in most asana you will face it you will see that it is placed to the front but in this one it is placed backwards right the palms face this area is placed backwards so whole body should be in a straight line palms face must be placed backwards this area it is placed backwards legs together and toes pointed which is also a common point shoulder distance in hands elbows placed on side of the stomach and face facing forward okay now ashtavakrasana legs should be crossed by each other you can see this area uh, at the ankle it is crossed one hand in between legs 90 degree angle in elbows which means here there is a 90 degree maintained upper arm and shoulder parallel to the ground when you make your elbow 90 degree automatically your upper arm and shoulder should be parallel to the ground expansion of chest forearms at 90 degree to the floor when you make your elbows 90 degree the four forearms will also be at 90 degree only okay and the face facing forward next one padma mayurasana here also the palms are facing backwards right and the padmasana must be parallel to floor elbows placed on stomach with shoulder distance in hands shoulder hip and knees should be in a straight line palms facing should be placed backwards face facing forward now makshikasana 
The athlete must be in half hand balance. In previous slide also, we found one asana where the athlete was in half hand balance. Here also, the athlete is in half hand balance where his forearms are also touching the floor. One leg placed behind the neck. Other legs knee placed under the opposite armpit. Toes should not touch the floor. If the toes uh, touch the floor, is it hand balancing? No. So the toes should not touch the floor. Body should be placed horizontally like this, which means pa um, parallelly to the floor. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands, backbone straight, face facing forward. In all this asana, there are a few points which are common, like the face would be facing forward and there will be chest expansion. And in here, there is a half hand balance also. Okay. And also you have to note it down that in Mayurasana, there will be the palms will be facing backwards. Shall we move on to the next slide? Okay. Next one is Athomukha Rikshasana. This comes under group C, right? The base value will be 0.8. The whole body should be in a straight line. Okay. So, when the body is in a straight line, the all other points will be automatically satisfied. Like the head will be in between hands, shoulder distance in hands, face facing front. While the athlete is performing the asana, he might be facing the judges. So, he will be facing it uh, the face will be facing the front side of the stage. Hands and legs straight, fingers closed. Then the next one, Ekapada Vakshamayurasana. Whole body parallel to the ground. If you have any doubts, we can clear it after the session. Okay? I'll definitely give, give time to you. So please ask doubts. Um, last five minutes before the session. Okay. Can I continue? Okay. Whole body parallel to the ground. Folded leg must be bound by the same side hand and foot must be locked behind the opposite biceps. What is it saying? Folded leg must be bound by the same side hand which means it will be interlocking that hand and its foot must be locked behind the opposite biceps. Okay. Palms face must be placed towards in the front. Fingers closed. Shoulder distance in hands. Elbows placed on the side of the stomach. Face facing forward. Spine straight. Most of the points are repetitive, so you might get bored, but please do listen carefully to these highlighted points. Okay. Next one, count in yasana, where legs should, should be in a maximum stretch on elbows, which means the 90 degree, the uh, angle in elbows should be 90 degree here. So, we will be placing our foot, our knees on the elbows, right? So, the legs should be in a maximum stretch. It will be automatically in a maximum stretch. Whole body should be parallel to the ground. When your uh, elbows are in 90 degree, the whole body will be parallel to the ground. Both knees are straight here, okay? And there is expansion of chest, Face facing forward, fingers closed. Now, Titti Bhasana. Athlete should be in complete handstand, hand balance. Then the shoulder distance in hands, legs behind the shoulders and knees, straight with minimum distance. For if there, uh, there is lack of practice, their legs would be wider. So we have to avoid that. Minimum distance between legs. Hold the posture while keeping the elbows straight. Expansion of chest, fingers closed, face facing forward. Now the last asana in group C. Ekapada Prishtatitthi Basana. Folded legs should be placed downward 
of the back here it will be placed here in the back straight leg must be placed just behind the armpit okay here in the shoulder distance in hands with elbow straight face facing forward fingers closed okay now the next one dand tholan paschimottanasana here the stomach chest and forehead touching the legs which means there is not even a gap to hold a single sheet of paper here okay it should be uh, held together very tight so the stomach chest and forehead touching the legs knees should be straight only then we can touch our knees on our to our face then ankle sh shoulder and wrist in same line this is a very important point the ankle shoulder and wrist in a same line okay now chakorasana one leg placed on the back below the shoulder blade other leg perpendicular to the ground which means that's in 90 degree now shoulder distance in hands and look at the toe of the straight leg this is a very important point if two athletes are performing and one is looking at the toe and the other one is looking at the um, looking straight who will get more marks the one who is looking at the toes will get more marks because this according to key judging points that's what chakorasana is supposed to look like okay so look at the toe of the straight leg knees and hands straight extend the legs thigh and knee in contact with stomach and chest here also the stomach and chest are touching the thigh okay now parivrutta titti bhasana here there is a twist right the titti bhasana performed with a twist one leg behind the shoulder other in front of the body legs should be straight shoulder distance in hands and elbows straight stomach chest touching to the front leg the one leg which is in the front will be touching the stomach and chest face facing forward now fanindrasana both legs must be placed equally on the back of the shoulder whole body should be placed vertically in one line okay the placement will be in one line shoulder distance in hands with elbow straight here it should be straight face facing forward now uttit ekapada prishta shirshasana one leg should be placed behind the lower back other leg placed behind the neck sorry this one in the lower back and this one behind the neck both hands should be placed behind the legs okay now shoulder distance in hands whole body should be placed vertically in one line and there will be we will be lifting our body with the support of hand balance so the shoulders in one line and parallel to the floor okay now the last slide in forward bend that is which carries the maximum weight okay the one who is performing these asanas perfectly will get more marks what happens if an other athlete is choosing a asana from d category he per performs it perfectly but the one who has selected the difficult one most difficult one he is performing it with minor mistakes will get more marks the other one will get more marks so choose your asanas very strategically while uh, giving them training make sure that they get the best results so test their capabilities and make sure they choose the right asana okay not the difficult one but the one in which they can score better now urdhva mukha hasta padmasana 
Here, the legs is in Patmasana and the pas pas Patmasana must be touched with abdomen. Here, they are touching the abdomen. Shoulder distance in hands. Palm space should be placed towards front side. Here, there is no need to say it will be on the front side. Head should be placed outside but the face facing upwards. Okay. Body should be in tilting position. Here, the body will be in a tilting position. Fingers closed. Now, Athomuga Uttid Kurmasana. Both legs should be placed properly on back of the head. Hands must be straight with shoulder distance. Whole body perpendicular to the ground, that is in a 90 degree. Face facing towards the ground. Here there is a point, the face is facing towards the ground, right? And fingers closed. Now, Brahma Hastrasana, one leg should be placed just upon the shoulder and foot should be locked on hand. Here, the one leg should be placed just upon the shoulder and it should be locked on hand. It will be intertwined. Other leg lifted upward and bent in 90 degree from knee here. The other leg which is lift, lifted upward will be bending 90 degree from the knee. From here it will be in 90 degree. Hands should be straight with shoulder distance. Both legs should make Z sign which means a Z. Letter Z, alphabet Z will be made here and here. Both legs should make a Z sign. Elbow straight, fingers closed. Face facing towards the ground. Here also the face is facing downwards. Now, Ekhasta Patma Mayurasana. Patmasana parallel to floor. Here it is parallel. One elbow placed on stomach here. And the other hand is touching the thigh with elbow straight. Right? He is balancing on single hand and the other hand is touching the thighs. Back, hip and knees all in straight, straight line. Which means the knees, the back and hip will be in a straight line. Face facing forward. Here he is facing it forward. Fingers closed. Now, Parashupashasana. Atlas must be in half hand balance. Once again, there is an asana with half hand balance. One leg should be placed behind the neck. Other leg in contact with stomach and chest. One is placed here and the other one is in contact with stomach and chest. Side of calf should touch the ear. This, this side should be touching the ear. Whole body should be placed horizontally parallel to the floor. Like this it will be placed, right? Now the shoulder distance in elbows and hands face facing upwards. Face is facing upwards. Let's move on to the other session which means forward bend, right? Let's move on to forward bend. Hand balancing, sorry, backward bend, base value with 0 0.6, which uh, is which comes under group A. The first one here is pinch mayurasana. In the uh, code of points, there is a mistake here only in the first page. It is written hand balance forward bend. You can correct it as hand balance backward bend. Okay. Only in this page there is a mistake. Pinch Mayurasana. HBB1 A1 with a base value of 0 0.6. The athlete should be in half hand balance. Raise both legs upward with 
toes together here also the emphasis is on, is on the toes it should be together slightly backward bend knees should be straight hips should should not touch the head this is a very important point in backward bend in most asana they will explicitly tell you in which asana the hip should touch and in which all the hips should not touch so this one is very important here the hips is not touching the head shoulder distance in elbows and hands which is a very common point lift head up and look forward eyes looking forward head also looking forward now ek pada pinch mayurasana what's the difference here here from this one pinch mayurasana one leg is folded and it is placed on the crown area let's uh, read the key judging points elbow open as shoulder level with hand finger closed okay that's a very common point lift head up and look forward raise right leg upward with toe stretched fold one leg and place feet on crown of the head there is no um, stipulation that the athlete should raise only the right leg okay it's a uh, it can be a uh, left leg also according to their comfort so they can right um, raise their leg upward with the toe stretched and the other leg should be placed on the crown area of the head which means the top of the head slightly backward bend there is a slight backward bend but here also hip should not touch the head very important point hip should not touch the head now vrishtikasana here also these are these three are more like a sequence the in pinch mayurasana both legs are straight here one leg is folded here both legs are folded and placed on top of the head the crown area so vrishtikasana one elbow open as shoulder level with hand finger closed bend both leg and place both feet on crown area of the head legs together hips should not touch the head lift head up and look forward in a forward direction now jatukasana this one is different elbow open as shoulder level with hand finger closed bring head up in between elbow what is written there we have to bring our head up in between elbow bend both knees and fold it behind the back here we should bend our knees keep knees and feet together it should be kept together face facing maximum upwards maximum upwards okay that's a very important point i forgot to highlight it you can note it down face facing maximum upwards okay now ardh padma pinj mayurasana elbow open as shoulder level with hand finger closed this is a very common point now bend one leg in half padmasana the other leg perpendicular to ground with toe pointed this one is in 90 degree the other one the leg is in half padmasana face facing downwards this is also very important the face should be facing downwards okay and the athlete is in half hand balance right here also all these in all these asanas the athletes are in half hand balance so you can note it down as a general point here 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 everywhere in all these five asanas they are doing half hand balance only their forearms are also touching the floor now let's move on to group b padanga vrishtikasana 2 here place one foot on crown of head which means here and bend other leg and place a foot on thigh and knee must be in line parallel to floor here the athlete is touching his feet touching his head with his feet and the other leg it is touching the knee of the 
the other leg okay the arm should be straight with shoulder distance lift head up and look ground look ground the eyes should be downwards fingers closed okay now here this is also a variation of this one padanga vrishikasana here two both legs are placed on top of the head so both knees bent and foot firmly placed on crown of the head both knees are bent and foot firmly placed on crown of the head both legs and knees joined here it should be touching but what shouldn't touch hip hip should not touch the head there should be a space in between it shouldn't be touching lift head up and look forward the look should be given in the front direction look lift head up and look forward now hasta vyakrasana here also this is also a variation arm should be in a straight with shoulder distance lift head up and look forward both legs stretch upward with toes stretched in a tilted position okay tilted position means more like a 45 degree angle okay so the both legs are stretched upward with toes stretched in a tilted position hips should not touch the head not it down the hips shouldn't touch the head face should be facing front fingers closed no padma pada vrishtikasana too there is a slight difference here from the padanga vrishtikasana here the feet is touching the knee but here he is crossing his uh, leg and touching the thigh one leg folded and placed on an another leg's thigh okay other leg should be placed firmly on crown of the head it is placed here also it is placed on the crown in padanga vrishtikas but the leg positions are entirely different lift head up and look forward fingers closed now ek pada skand shiva linga karnasana here you can obviously understand the athleticism half hand balance one leg folded and foot placed under the chin there is a new element added here the leg is where is it placed it is placed under the chin other leg parallel to ground and thigh in contact with head this the other leg which is um uh, stretched out it should should be touching the head it, it shouldn't be touching it should be contact which means the side of the leg the thighs will be touching the head it shouldn't be kept uh, uh, on the um top of the head but it should be in contact okay now shoulder distance in elbows and hands lift the head up and look forward so in all this asana here this was the look was on the ground here forward here forward and here also forward so all these four asanas the look is given forward here it is given looking down okay now group c this one will one sec okay the arms should be straight with shoulder distance ek pada vrishtik shiva linga karnasana there is a slight difference here arms should be straight with shoulder distance one leg folded and the foot firmly placed on the crown of the head here it will be placed other leg stretched forward parallel to ground and thigh in contact with head shoulder distance in hands lift the head up and look forward stretch the leg and hands should be straight this one should be straight and hands should be straight tarkodasana 
arm should be straight with shoulder distance. Bend one leg and place foot under the chin. There is one more asana where foot is placed under the chin. Raise the other leg upward and it should be in a 90 degree angle from the knee. From here it is bent in a 90 degree angle. Lift the head up and look forward. Now Paripurnasana. Arms should be straight with shoulder distance. Both legs folded and play, feet placed under the chin. Both feet are placed under the chin. Thighs, knees, toes together. So which, which means the thighs will be touching, knees will be touching and the toes will be touching. There will be a slight gap in between. Our head will be placed. Lift the head up and look forward. It is Paripurnasana. Now, Shivalinga Karnasana. Athlete should be in half hand balance. One more asana where the athlete is in half hand balance. Both legs stretched forward parallel to the ground with knees straight. Back of thighs in contact with crown of the head. Which means the thighs should be touching our top of the head. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up and look forward. Last one. Ekapada Kokila Vrishtikasana. Here the athlete is again in half hand balance. One leg folded and foot placed under the same armpit. armpit. This leg is folded and its foot is placed under the armpit here. The thigh is in contact with the head. It is, a, it is touching the head. And other legs foot firmly placed on the crown of the head with knee stretching upward. The knees are in a 90 degree angle and the foot is placed on the crown of the head. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up and look forward. Here also in all asanas, I think the look is given forward. Okay, so you can note it down. Now, group D. Nagastrasana, one leg folded and foot placed under the chin. Other leg's foot placed on the opposite thigh. The leg uh, folded and placed under the chin, it is here and on that leg's thigh, the other foot will be placed more like a Artha Padmasana. The thigh and knee parallel to the ground. Shoulder distance in hands, lift the head up and look forward. Look forward. Padma Vrishtikasana. Here, the athlete is performing a complete full Patmasana, but with his legs touching the crown of the head. The Patmasana should be parallel to ground. It shouldn't be lifted. It should be touching your crown. Then it will be parallel to the ground. And resting on head. It should be resting properly placed on head. Shoulder distance in hands. Lift the head up and look forward here also. Looking forward. Now, Ekapada Kokilasana. One leg folded and foot placed under the same armpit. Please have a look here that the hips are touching the head. Okay, this is the one point, one asana in which I want you to note down the hips are touching the head. Other leg stretched forward parallel to ground. Thigh in contact with the head. This thigh will be in contact with the head. Both thighs touching the side of the head. Both the side will be, both the uh, thighs will be touching the head. Okay. Here the hip is making a contact. Also thighs are also touching the head. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up. Look forward. Fingers closed. 
Now put path the kokilasana. One leg folded and foot placed under the same arm. We are talking about this leg, which is folded and placed under the same armpit. The other leg here is folded with knee stretched. Knees are bent, but upward and foot placed on the other thigh. The foot is placed work on the other leg's thigh. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up, look forward, hips touching head, fingers closed. The last one in group D will be Uttit Lamb Konasana. Here, one leg is stretched in upward direction. Straight upward direction, it is placed in a 90 degree. Other leg parallel to the ground and touching the head. Here, the thighs is making contact with the head. Another perpendicular to the floor. So this is perpendicular to the floor. This is um, in a 90 degree. And the hands at shoulder distance, face forward, knees straight, both legs in 90 degree, fingers closed here. It is in 90 degree. Here also it is in 90 degree. The fingers are closed. And the last one, group E which has the highest base value. This is Paribritta Shivalinga Karnasana. Here, there is a twist happening because Atla should be, uh, is in hand balance and with a twisting position, he will lift his legs and he will twist. Standing in hand balance itself, he will twist. The both legs stretched forward parallel to the ground with knees straight. Both legs are stretched forward parallel to the ground with knees straight. Back of thighs is in contact with crown of the head. Here also it is touching and it is important because if it is not touching, there will be a minus point. If it should touch the crown of the head. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up and look forward. Kakmukta Hastasana. Both legs are folded and foot locked under the lateral part of stomach. Here, the, on the side of the stomach, it will be tucked in. Like the foot will be locked under the side of the stomach. Um, chin bone and back of thighs in contact with crown of the head. Okay. Sorry. What is it written there? Is it? One sec. Let me check. Yeah. Chin bone and back of thighs in contact with crown of the head. Okay. I think it's not chin bone. I think they meant shin. Okay. You may correct it. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up and look forward. Okay. Now, Dvipada Kokilasana. Both legs are folded and foot locked to the hands as down as possible. Here they are not, touch, uh, not saying you should touch your feet um, with the hands. They are saying it should be locked to the hands as down as possible. Depending on each athlete, it should be um, performed. Perineum in contact with back of the head, which means our hips will be touching our head and the perineum, that means the genital area will also be touching the back of the head. That much contact, it must, it, it should be there. Okay. It should be that much tight. There shouldn't be a space in between. Head should be lifted up as much as possible in between both thighs. Okay. You, despite uh, the effort of uh, trying to touch the perineum, we should, uh, the athlete should perform it in such a way that he is lifting his head up 
as much as possible between both thighs. Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up and look forward. Now, Hasta Samagonasana. Here, the athlete must be in a 180 degree side split, which means it will be both the legs will be in a side split. The glute muscle in contact with the head. Again, the back muscles will be touching the head. Both legs in one line and parallel to the ground with toes pointed. Some athlete may be performing it like according to their flexibility, they may not be able to stretch both legs in one line. One leg will be here, the other leg will be here. It is not accurate. According to our key judging points, both legs should be in a straight line and parallel to the ground. And the toes should be pointed. The shoulder distance in hands. It's also a common point. Lift the head up and look forward. And we have come down to the last asana. Vibhakta Pada Shivalinka Karna Asana. Here, the athlete should be in hand balance. No need to say. Both legs stretched forward parallel to the ground with knees straight. Both legs are stretched forward parallel to the ground. But here, in between, our head is also placed. So, we won't be touching our toes or feet together and it should the knees should be straight back of thighs should rest on shoulders our shoulder will be in contact with back of thighs now head should be uplifted in between both thighs just like this one we should try to lift our head up as much as possible Shoulder distance in elbows and hands. Lift the head up and look forward. So we have um, finished all the slides related to backward bend and forward bend. I know it's a, it is a bit or um, a little bit overwhelming to go through all the points and it might be boring to you also. That's why I try to highlight the important points. Okay. So, you should uh, make sure the, this important highlighted points are always well understood and you should be well prepared about that. It shouldn't, I don't think it might come to your exams or so, but to be a better course, that's what we are aiming for, right? So, you should be able to remember all the points and you should also try it this way, like find out all the general points and Note it down in which asana there is a difference, in which which all asanas can be grouped under one category. Like in most asanas, there, uh, it will be in full hand balance, but we, ha we have seen that in some asanas, there was half hand balance. Okay, so you should be able to understand in which asanas there will be a half hand balance, in which asanas there will be a full hand balance, where our eyes should be. Uh, pointed, our toes should be pointed and the in most cases the toes will be pointed and um, I think uh, the shoulder distance is also a common point. There will be a chest width maintained in most of the asanas and I think we have come to the last slide which means in just in case if you have any doubts this is the reference which is given in the last page of COP. I will, um, once again, I will remind you that you should learn the COP. You should understand the COP from the first page to last page. You should be able to have a nice grip over the syllabus. Okay. You should be uh, in some of the areas, some category students are in the quarterfinal, in the semi-final, in the final, uh, most of us are not required to perform, or perform all the asanas. Only a specified category asanas are required to be performed. That you can uh, find it on your COP. More classes will be there. But just in case, uh, coming down to our 50 asanas, 50 hand balance, forward, forward bend and backward bend, all these asanas, are um, taken from or it, it is given reference to 
some of the main books here. Are you familiar with all these books? The BKS Iyengar Slight on Yoga. It has all the asanas. Most asanas are there. And there is 2,100 asanas. There is another book. Then there is Asana Pranayama Mudra Bandha. Hadarat Yoga Asana, the encyclopedia. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the last one, the cover page of the, the uh, another book that is mentioned. That is Yoga Gita, which is written by Dr. Sanjay Malpani ji, sir, or, um, and Mangesh Khopkarji. So I couldn't find the cover of that book. But, uh, and unfortunately, most asanas are uh, referenced from that book. Uh, in case of hand balance, forward bend, most asanas are from Yogida and light on yoga. So this light on yoga is a must have in your library. Also, this asana pranayama mudra bandha is also very helpful. So you can refer all these books. It is given in your COP also. Okay. So no need to worry. And thank you. I hope I did justice to my task and happy coaching. And I think uh, the time is up. So in case you have any doubts, you can contact me in this number. This is my WhatsApp number or you can call me in this number. This is my WhatsApp number. And I think uh, Shreyasji, with your permission, may I end the session? Your number is not being seen because of your memory. Is it clear now? No, number, number, full number is not seen. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just tell you nine four double zero double nine two seven nine eight. It is there in the PDF. I mean, the PPT. You will be, um, I'll be sharing this PPT with you. Okay, you will get this PPT, so no need to worry. Did you understand the session? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for the wonderful yes, session. Excellent session, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your wonderful session, Atulia Ji. Thank you. And it was very nicely you have took the session and fluently you have took. And hopefully all the doubts were also cleared. So now with us, our next resource person have also joined. <laughs> Hello. Thanks a lot, ma'am. This session is 